we continue our automotive theme. Yes, we should. We should. That brings us to our uh, guest today, mm -hmm. and that would be Benny Fowler, Ford Motor Company's own group vice president, World Quality. Benny, how the hell are you? All right. How are you doing today? It's I great to be here with you. Fantastic. I'm very excited to have you here today. Uh, you are one very busy amigo, Benny. Uh, new products coming out, uh, car shows. Uh, in fact, just last weekend, you spoke at the ISO 9000 conference. You were a keynote speaker, weren't you? Tell us again, what was the, the uh, topic that you, that you spoke about? Well, we spent a little time talking about the uh, quality journey at Ford. I spent a little time going back in the history of Ford uh, really talking about the theme of uh, the Ford Motor Company being key to bring affordable transportation to all mankind. We, we spent a little time also talking about the journey of Ford and obviously you know um, the industry has been through some tough times and Ford has not been exempt from that and how we've actually used our uh, overall enterprise quality operating system to help us um, uh, turn our company around. Yeah. Well, history and Ford, there's, there, there are two words that go together. Yes. I mean, there's, that's a tremendous history. You're a history buff yourself. I, I am, and I, I'm, I'm glad you touched on that, Benny, because the legacy of Ford is one, and, and I don't know that, that a lot of people really realize that a lot of, of what we now know today is, as lean really were developed you know, as much as 100 years ago by, by Henry Ford uh, and the Rouge River plant and, and the original plants that that uh, that Ford had in the early early 20th century. So, can you talk a little bit about some of the efficiencies and, and how Ford owns the idea of lean and the, the the concept of lean, if not the actual out and out name of lean? How Ford adapts that and brings that forward into the future? Well, I think uh, if you think back to history, uh, Henry Ford actually developed the first uh, production system, uh, building Model Ts, uh, some time ago. And the basic idea was to take raw material and turn it into finished goods and to do that at the most efficient and, and, and affordable way possible. And also going back in history, uh, certainly helping to create the middle class by offering the $5 a day wage uh, for, for a lot of Americans uh, at that time. So um, a great history, as you talked about in terms of uh, uh, producing the, great, the first assembly line as well as uh, 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 being uh, of service to all of mankind. And when I look at and study the history of the Ford Motor Company, that, that, that notion of uh, bringing affordable uh, vehicles and affordable technology to all mankind is steeped in our history and is really a part of what's really driving us today. One of the things I, I loved about Henry Ford and, and loved reading about him was this idea, as you say, the $5 day, where his concept was really a brilliant one, and it was a simple one, that he wanted his, his workers, his line workers, to be able to afford to also be his customers and paying them enough to be able to afford the products that he was rolling off his assembly lines. He, he kind of wins in both ways that way, right? I mean, that's, that's kind of a brilliant, brilliant insight. Another lean strategy. And a, and a lean strategy. <laughs> Absolutely. So uh, you've made all the key points for me. So no, <laughs> need to, uh, uh, to repeat those comments. Uh, you, you, you have it all in a nutshell. <laughs> Henry Ford, the Henry. godfather of Lee. He, absolutely. I mean, you know, uh, gosh, you're talking about it more than 100 years ago. I got really quite a legacy. Uh, Benny, I want to talk about about moving forward a little bit. And and one thing that we uh, are always really interested in here at Quality Digest and our readers are is, is elements of the supply chain and, and risk management. Hey, nobody has a crystal ball. None of us know what's going to happen in the future with natural disasters or wars or oil price increases, whatever the case may be. But how do you and your team kind of try to look over the horizon as much as you can at, at potential risks in dealing with your suppliers and mitigating those risks and, and ensuring quality? Well, the very first thing that we work on here at Ford is really trying to establish a great partnership with our suppliers. And I think communication is a key element of what we've been trying to do to move our company forward and to move our relationships forward with our suppliers. And we have a notion uh, in, in, in our, on our overall, uh, the way we uh, present ourselves, with, which suggests that it should be profitable growth for all, which means not only the Ford Motor Company, but our suppliers and all of our key stakeholders to benefit from the work that we do. 
And I think as long as you have that as your basic thought process, as your basic way of doing business, and then work on the understanding of designing and developing cars and components that deliver what the customers want, we will all survive. And I think the way we do that is starting off with uh, good engineering uh, standards, good process standards, and good quality confirmation standards to really help us deliver the products and services that we want. And I think it's as simple as that. As you pointed out, um, um, the, the environment has been very volatile uh, uh, over the last four or five years. And I think the one thing that we've enjoyed is the relationship with our suppliers that has allowed us to handle you know, various risk factors that has confronted us that has confronted us confronted us over the last uh, couple of years or so. Mm -hmm. You talked about supplying product to to the customers and 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 ensuring quality through that. There was a recent article that the AP circulated uh, just a few days ago. I think it was <clears throat> I believe it was February twenty seventh that that talked about the fact that Detroit expects this year to to have orders for more than a million more cars than it did last year. That that's great. Hey, it's great news. For, for U.S. auto manufacturers, definitely. Um, but it, it raises a, a point, it raises a question. How do you ensure quality when you're in that growth phase and you're, you're having to add line workers and, and how do you get those line workers? Ryan, you, you, you are a, a old gearhead and you've been, <laughs> you've been in, the, in the space for a long time. And, well, in, spent decades in production and volume repair. So the question really is how do you, and this is the question for Benny, is how do you bring people in and give them that knowledge when you bring them onto the line, maybe for the first time. Well, I was wondering, actually, Benny, uh, as far as uh, ramping up production, and and we spoke about this, uh, how uh, production uh, orders for Ford are, are picking up yep. uh, at a great pace. Yep. Is there the avenue for um, uh, bringing uh, skilled workers, uh, former workers, maybe back can. onto the line? Mm -hmm. Is that is that part of uh, what's going on at Ford, or, or possibly going on? Well, let me, let me try to start with this in, in a couple of ways. The one thing that we've been working on over the last uh, five years is strengthening our quality operating system. The basic way and the basic standard approach that we're going to be using to run our uh, manufacturing location, whether it be assembly, powertrain, stamping, uh, anything that we, we, we manufacture. So it's that standardization that's allowing us to be able to take a basic system and to deliver the best cars and trucks that we've been that, that that we have delivered over time and over the last five years the Ford Motor Company has probably been the most improved auto manufacturer um, you know based upon all the data we've been able to look at so taking the training element I think that when you start to bring new workers on we start with uh, bringing back our employees that might have been laid off over time and I think that uh, we'll fundamentally have uh, everybody back that uh, wants to come back to the Ford Motor Company. So that's step one. And obviously, if you've been off for some time, what we start off with some basic work hardening elements for, for all, the, all of the operators before they ever get onto the assembly line, we'll basically be taking them through some static training offline before they ever get onto the assembly line. Then once uh, the, the uh, employees are ready, we'll start to pair them up with uh, uh, operators that are basically on the on the line doing the same job that 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 uh, they will be doing when they move to the shift that they're going to be going to. So we'll spend enough time to get the operators proficiency up before they actually are placed on the assembly line by themselves. So then at a certain point we'll back the experienced operator away and have him observing the operation with the operator in place and once we deem that that operator is proficient and he's capable of performing the job uh, uh, the way we want it without hurting himself first and producing the quality of levels, then and only then we will put him on an assembly line by himself. That seems to uh, dovetail into something I heard you say from uh, last year's ASQ World Conference where you spoke and I was watching that on YouTube. Everything's on YouTube. Uh, and I heard you say a very interesting thing, and that was advancements in quality start with leadership teams. Now, is that something you're touching on with the people on the line, is the, the leadership teams, those are right on the floor, is that right? That's correct? Well, we have, uh, in every one of our assembly plant, we'll have work group teams. That's one form of teams that are 
always working on uh, continuous improvement and delivering uh, quality to the to the uh, to the to our end customers. Then what we have in every one of our uh, assembly location and powertrain uh, locations, we have what we call variability reduction teams, and those teams are focused on looking at the basic elements, any information that comes into our from our customers. Example, we can get a warranty claim from our dealerships within 48 hours of a claim being put in by a customer. That information comes into our assembly plants or our powertrain locations every day, and we work on adjusting our manufacturing standards based upon you know, what we hear from our customers. So it's real time, real focus, uh, real adjustments. Every we, call, we, we have a saying that says we're gonna work on every claim every day. That is great. Benny, before you go, I've just got one more thing being a huge fan, of, I'm actually a Ford fan myself, a huge fan of the old Ford GT40 from the 60s, which beat the pants off the Ferrari in the Le Mans <laughs> races, and brought back in 2006 for a 4,000 car production run. There's rumor about a 2012 GT supercar can you can you comment on that or is it, I, ju I just wanted to let you know that if you need test drive services for that for that development it's your man I, I'm your man so just I'm just saying well uh, no I, I heard some of those rumors myself <laughs> and uh, now that you both oh looks I'll like I'll certainly uh, look forward to putting you behind the wheel <laughs> all right <laughs> <laughs> I'll look forward to it. All right. Well, All right. Benny, well, Benny, thank, thank you so much for, for joining us here today. We'll, we'll leave it at that. We're, Ryan is very excited now, and that's, that's a good way. Uh, thank you, really, Benny, for joining us today again. Uh, that's Benny Fowler. He is the, uh, the, the, uh, the, the group, group, group vice, vice president, president world quality for Ford, Ford Motor, Motor Company. Company. Benny, thank you again for joining us, and we'll, we'll catch up with you later. <laughs>